connected to another Ramban. The two Rambans about Shabbat in Aseret that he wrote. Why is Shabbat in the second Aseret that he wrote got a, 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 an idea about Yitziat Mitzrayim? When we make Kiddush, we say, Zecher l'maseh b'reshit, Zecher l'yitziat Mitzrayim. Mikra Kodesh, Mikra Kodesh, Yishon Huli, Mikra Kodesh, Zecher l'yitziat Mitzrayim. What about Shabbat is a, memor a commemoration of Yitziat Mitzrayim? Yitziat Mitzrayim didn't happen on Shabbat, I don't think. And it doesn't matter, I mean, what has Shabbat got to do with it? And his question was that Hashem says, make sure that you are resting, and your wife is resting, and your children are resting, and your servant is resting, and your animal is resting, right? And you shall remember the days that you came out of Mitzrayim, and that's why I'm commanding you this mitzvah. Is there a connection between Yitziat Mitzrayim and that form of the mitzvah? Right? So there are two. The Zechiat Mitzrayim Mitzvah Shabbat is on Perik Tetvav. I'm sorry, Perik Hey Pasuk Tetvav. Is that where you are? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I thought. Hey. Fifth Perik in, in Dvarim, mm. in Deuteronomy. Uh, the sentence number 15, for just a moment, we'll go to the text. It takes, it's, it'll, it'll be very quick because it's a certain that he wrote everybody's you familiar. You shall not do any work, your, you, your son, your ox, your donkey, and your every animal. Go ahead, yeah. Sure, um, 15, right? Yes, 15. Well, it starts in the beginning, yeah. You do, yeah. Your servant. You skipped one, no? Your servant. And your maidservant. And your ox. And yeah, your yeah, donkey. Yeah, nice, nice. Did you meet that? Did you skip that, right? Yeah, because they skipped. Yeah, yeah, but that's important. Yes, and yes. all of your animals. And the stranger who is in your gates. Yes. In order that your servant and your maidservant shall rest like you. Just like you. Next sentence. Vizacharta, and you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Hashem brought you out from there with a strong hand, yeah, no, no. and with an outstretched arm. Therefore, He has commanded you, Hashem Elokecha, your God, has commanded you to do this Shabbat. To do this Shabbat. Have a day of rest. Now, you will see that, is there a connection between Yitzhak Mitzrayim and the day of rest? Do you mean to say that you have to remember that once upon a time you used to work very hard? And now when you have a day of rest, you will remember that you were once in Mitzrayim working very hard, not only this week in the work when you delivered papers, and not only when you were doing other kinds of work, right? But you remember also when you have a hard week, you remember, oh, I was once a slave in Egypt and I worked even harder. And now I have Shabbat, so I remember that Hashem took me out of Mitzrayim. Is that, it's a kind of a loose connection, uh, I right? Know, I don't know how loose it is. No? I mean, uh, once I, upon I a time. I remember when I was a slave and I worked and worked and worked and worked right. ever a day of rest. And now and I have now, a day of rest. I have a day of rest. And that reminds me of Hashem taking me out of Egypt and all the miracles that were done to take me out of Egypt to free me. So I'm not rejecting this, but it is a little tenuous. I mean, maybe we should, I mean, that's the Seder night. We remember and we try to relive the fact that we were slaves once upon a time and we feel like we're going out into freedom and that's what Pesach is, right? So every Shabbat you remember that you were once a slave in Egypt and you went out and that's why you have a day of rest so you feel that you will remember Egypt? Okay, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm posing the question, you will see. The Ramban brings three opinions about the connection between Shabbat and Mitzrayim, you will see in a moment, and he rejects two of them and then he has his own. Mm -hmm. So we will see in a minute. Others might say, what other connections can you think of? Listen, listen to what we just read. And you shall remember that you, uh, let's go back, you shall rest. You and your children, right? And your animals, and your servant, and your maidservant, and every and, and the stranger in your gates, in order that, in order that, your servant shall rest like you. Equality. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, 
and Hashem took you out of there with a strong and outstretched hand, and therefore He has commanded you to do the Shabbat. So what other connection between Mitzrayim and Shabbat is there? Equality between the master and servant. Yeah, I mean, that's obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Hashem is telling you, not just you should rest, because He said that in the first Aseret that He brought, remember? Right? This time he's including not only you, but also your maidservant and your servant and your animals and so on. We're probably a little bit added here because they're going into Israel now and they're going to have a society with property and so on and so on. Right? So you make sure that not only you rest, but also all under you shall rest. And, you might think, therefore, and I want to remember, you remind you, just in case you don't think that your servant should rest just like you. You know, why should he rest? I mean, I'm, uh, I've got Shabbat, Hashem commanded me on Shabbat, let him continue to work. What is this, uh, why should he rest, right? Right? Why should the stranger rest? I, I'm resting, I'm the boss, right? So I want to remind you that you once upon a time were a servant and a slave, and I took you out to freedom, and that's why I am I'm commanding you this mitzvah, that you shall be sure to let others who are under you, your workers and your servants, should rest like you. All right? So that's another connection between this mitzvah having mitzrayim connected to it, right? You might say, however, what if I don't have anybody working for me? Oh. And I don't, and, I, and I'm just a single person, or I have a nice family, I love my wife and my children, and so everybody has a Shabbat. Does, am I reminded of Yitziat Mitzrayim when I don't have anybody to free? You, or what if uh, someone doesn't, doesn't want it to give showers? For example, one of my slaves, I don't, I don't care. He wants, he wants to work. He He's wants, violating. He wants to work, exactly. Well, He's violating the, uh, one of the Ten Commandments. Hashem, what do you Hashem, mean, what if? Hashem says that the human being, the nature of the human being, is that he should have a day of rest. He works hard six days, not five, as is in America, but six days, six days, and then give him a The person needs a day off. Yeah, but uh, what, what is this? It also commemorates, commemorates God's. God's dominion over the world. He's the creator of the world, and he established this day as the day when we take stock of the world and remind ourselves that he was the creator, and so on and so on. There's something not just resting. It's an important day. But you have to do it, and also your servants. Everyone who is working for you should rest on Shabbat. You must not ask somebody to do some work for you on Shabbat. Even a non-Jew, you must not ask him to do work for you on Shabbat. Please drive me to so-and-so, or bring me the newspaper, deliver me the newspaper from the store, or buy me, so, some, buy me some milk. The, the question, Even an Anju. why, the, why the, the Shabbat, the Shabbat guy, the Shabbat boy, the Shabbat girl, the Shabbat... What? what? Well, we use in, in our communities, the, 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 the guy that was working, doing some kind of works for us on Shabbos, or people... Uh, so it's very restricted about how that can be done. And we're not going to get into that unless we want to deviate because now we'll have the Shulchan Aruch about when you actually cannot ask some non-Jew to do some, some things work for you, except in very unusual circumstances. Let's put it aside for a moment. Okay, so let's look at the Ramban about this mitzvah, which is in chapter 5, 6, 15, right? 15. 515. Ah. And he says like this, When he says, therefore, I commanded you, therefore, God commanded you the Shabbat. What is the therefore? Is the therefore going on the previous sentence? Meaning, I want to remind you that you are a slave so that your slave should rest like you. Therefore, God commanded you this Shabbat. Do you understand? In other words, what is the therefore? Lefichach. In, in the last sentence, it says, therefore, al Cain, Hashem commanded you this day. Right? So we're trying to figure out what is the therefore. So, Shiva, Shita, Sekein, Beyom Shabbat, Kach Pireh, Eben Ezra. The Eben Ezra says, our last reason that we had discussed, that you are commanded to, to be sensitive to the servant and the slave and the, and, the, and the maidservant and the animals, that they should rest on Shabbat just like you. 
therefore, and God wants to remind you that you were once like them, even lower than them, you were once a slave, oppressed, and God freed you, therefore you should be sensitive to them and give them the day free as well. That's what the al that's the Eben Ezra. Right, it says here in... Right? Yes. So there goes the, uh, the Ramban now objecting to this. And he says, no nachon, this is not true. The Anu Omrim, the Kiddush Hayom, Ki Yom Zet Chilal, and Mikrai Kodesh, Zecher Yisad Mitzrayim. And we say on Kiddush, in our Kiddush, when we say Kiddush on Friday night, we say, um, this day is the day, first day of, or the most important day of the holy uh, days of our calendar, a commemoration of the going out of Mitzrayim. Kasher nomar bo zecher lemasei breshit. Just like we say in the Kiddush, the commemoration of the day of creation, right? On the Kiddush, the same time. Hashem, so, Hashem. so is it possible, is it possible that Hashem commanded the mitzvah of the Torah, of the Torah, um, of the uh, Shabbat, because he wanted to make sure that we had our servants free. What if, what if we don't have any servants? If that's if that's the whole reason for Shabbat, that is a commemoration of Mitzrayim, is for that reason. He is trying to say that it doesn't sound like the most important reason to do. He's not, he's not objecting. The Torah does say you have to let your servant work. That's that's a fact. But when the Torah says, therefore, God commanded you the Shabbat. You have to remember Mitzrayim, and therefore he commanded you the Shabbat. He thinks is not connected to the servant working or not working. You have to remember that you came out of Mitzrayim. Why? What's that got to do with it? So first he's going to go into the Mora Nebuchim. First the Rambam. He says like this: Amar of Rav 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 Nebuchim, Ki Ma'amar Arishon Hu Kavod Hayom VeHadoro. The first Aseret that he brought when when Hashem said in Yitro, in Yitro, you keep the Shabbat holy because that's the day Hashem created the world and then rested on the seventh day. That's what it says in the first one. That's to commemorate the importance of the day. And when it says here, oh, that's another, that's another mitzvah, uh, when, uh, when God says in Shmot, that therefore God has commanded you to keep the, the day holy, and therefore he told you that he sanctified this day because this is the day that he created the world. No, the day that he rested. The day he rested. Yeah, yeah. The day, therefore it commemorates his creation of the world in, in the six days. But here, This time, he wants you to keep the Shabbat because you were slaves in Egypt. Why? Ovdim kol hayom al We were working hard all day long, compelled, right? People forced us to work. Velo haytalanu menucha, and we had no rest whatsoever for the weary. Vehu yitzavenu atalish bot velanuach, and now he's commanding us to rest on this day and to be at peace. Kedei shenazkir chazdei Hashem aleinu bootziot anu meavodat am abdul menucha. So that this would be a reminder of us that, look, we once were slaves. Hashem made us free people. Look at us now behaving like free people, very able to rest. That's the first reason that you mentioned before, right? You talk like the Rambam, and you talk like the Ebenezer, Ezra, right? You talked about equality of people and how sensitive we have to be to Mitzrayim. Therefore, we should be nice to our servants and let them rest. The Rambam is talking about how Shabbat, which is a great day of rest, Besides remembering that Hashem created the world, we also remember that he took us out of slavery when we would never have rest, and he gave us a day of rest, and that reminds us, every Shabbat, it reminds us, look how easy, wonderful the day is. And now I remember, once upon a time, the days were terrible, right? We have to have like a association, right? I remember now that once upon a time, the days were terrible, and we never, never, never rested. And Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Why are we able to rest today? Because we are now free people and we can actually observe a day of rest, right? And therefore, oh, thank you, Hashem, for taking us out of Mitzrayim. So Shabbat has, to the Rambam, has two aspects, right? One aspect to commemorate Hashem's created with the world, creation of the world. The other aspect is gratitude for Hashem to make us free to be able to rest on the Shabbat. Uh, it's not just the Rambam. In the Yisrael, it's the Yisrael, it's the and here it says they should be at Mitzrayim. So the Torah says there are two, two aspects. In the Kiddush. Mm. Yeah. Correct. I mean, you do say that. 
All right. The question is, what is the Zecher? You'll see in a moment. Okay. So it could have been a Sunday, and it could have been a Tuesday. It could have been every Thursday night you go out to a party and you have a good time and you don't work. Anything that would be a symbol of being free mm -hmm. would remind you that once you were not free and that you are grateful to Hashem for taking you out of Mitzrayim. So the Ramban is going to object to both of these problems, both of these propositions, because they are not specific what specific day? for which day or for Shabbat so, um Right, so the Ramban is going to now chime in. We now understood the Eben Ezra, and we understand the Ramban. V'hinei, b'shabat b'klala shnei ta'amin, l'ha'amin b'chidush ha'olam, ki yesh elo We So therefore, according to the Ramban, this continues. Therefore, Shabbos has two aspects. One, to remember and to believe that the world was not always in existence. It came into being, and that there is a God who created it. And also, to remember the the great uh, charity, the great generosity that God had done with us that we were slaves, that he took us to him to be his servants. In other words, it's not just gratefulness for freedom, but also that we need to serve him, right? That he freed us to be his. Okay. That's the Rambam's end, the end of the Rambam's quote. He brought it, the whole language from the Mara Nebuchim here. Which is interesting because you, obviously the Ramban was very well versed in the Moran Nebuchim because he quotes him, he quotes him verbatim for entire paragraphs sometimes, not only here in other places as well. So, Gamze eno mechuvaretzli. This I don't also don't agree with. Ki biyutenu shoftim velo naasem melacha biyom hashvii ein lanu bazezi chron litziat misraim. See, he thinks that it's a little awkward, just because we're sitting relaxing with our family and having a nice meal is not necessarily a hint about commemoration of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. You have to go, as I said, the Rambam would demand a sort of like a, um, a, a hyper-consciousness, right? The, the last time you had a Shabbat, did you sit down and say, oh, I was once a slave and now I'm free, that's why I'm so happy, happy about it? Did you have to actually feel it this last Shabbat? So, well, the fact that you're uh, off, you're not working. Yeah, so? well. So, I mean, is that it's not yeah, it's, it's I'm not working, I'm not working in the office. I, I understand. It's nice to be free to, from my work. But it takes another leap. And maybe that's what, according to the Rambam, that's what we should do. When we feel the relaxation of Shabbat starting and we make Kiddush, we should say to each other, let's remember that once upon a time we would not be able to do this. And we were slaves. And Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. And not only did he create the world and that we are now commemorating that he's the boss of the world, he's also the one who redeemed us. Maybe we should always say that, according to the Rambam, right? But it's not an automatic feeling about Mitzrayim, just because you're not working today in the 21st century, right? I mean, on that day. That's his problem, okay? Um, and somebody who sees us not working, let's say apart from you, Right? You're, you're resting. So let's say you remember that. That might be. But if somebody else saw, sees you not working today, does he think of you, oh, he was once a slave and he went out of the shrine, God freed him. You're right, they don't know. I mean, they don't know the story. Rak he kasher kola mitzvot. It's just like any other mitzvah. Right? Aval yiye bo zecher lamasei breshit shenishbot biyom she shabbat sham Hashem v'yishon nafash. It is a zecher and a person is commemorating when he is resting on Shabbat to remember the deeds of creation that we rest on Shabbat, that Hashem himself rested or ended his work, the, the work that, that is yet Hashem to be done. Was, he, he wasn't a slave making the creation. If we connect the Mizraim and, and Bereshit, Bereshit is talking about the creation. He's busy. I have nothing to do with But busy is different than to be a slave. I am I'm working. I am a slave. But I am busy. But not in the same. Busy, busy as that. As the say. creation, of course. It has no connection. It's so no the connection. question is, what is the connection? What is the connection? We're trying to get them. So he says, mm-hmm. This is the Ramban's opinion now. Because 
Yitziat Mitzrayim testifies, teaches that about the God who is everlasting, mm -hmm. renewing, of able to change nature, mm -hmm. has a will and has the power, mm -hmm. like I explained in the first Dibra, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. What does Anochi mean? Remember, we, we read this once upon a time. What's Anochi? Is that a commandment or is that description? So he says it's a commandment to believe that there is I, God, who do all these things. Powerful, everlasting, infinite, without body and so on, unique, right? That is a belief. al Amar Bekan, because Yitzhak Mitzrayim commands that, right? How does Yitzhak Mitzrayim show you? That we'll see in a second. Alkena Marbakan, Imya Let's say you say, I'm living in the 21st century. Uh, was I around when God created the world? No, I wasn't no. there. No I, I, nobody was there. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I'm concerned, even if I was Adam Arishon, even if I was the first man, the first human being, I would wake up. I don't know. And I'd say, boy, this is a beautiful world. Yeah, but I... Look at this beautiful world. I see trees with fruit, and I see animals walking around, and I was sleeping here on the ground, and... Uh, Everything is new. I right? have hands, I have, uh, I have an eyes, and I... According to Judy once pointed out, my wife, the Tamidah Chachamab, once pointed out that God had it in his wisdom to create everything before mankind was created. Man was the last one to be created, right? Mm -hmm. So that every creature, so one, the Medrash says that man was created last because he wanted to prepare everything for him. You know, it's like he wanted to set the table. Set so the now table, you exactly. better, everything's ready. Right. Good. But Judy has an interesting idea. When God created, let's say, a mosquito, mm. the next time he created, let's say, a rabbit, the mosquito saw God creating a rabbit. There was no rabbit, mosquitoes walking flying around, and all of a sudden, poof, there's a rabbit. Mm. The only problem with it is that the mosquito doesn't have too much of a brain to think. So he doesn't really understand. You know, it's just like the light goes on, so a rabbit became. I mean, you know, there's night and day, so there's a rabbit before, and there's no rabbit now, there is a rabbit later. I mean, it doesn't matter to him, right? But then when he created the rabbit, after that he created a cow. So the rabbit is hopping around, there's no cow. Suddenly, poof, there's a cow. So the rabbit goes like that. But he also doesn't have any mind to say, oh, there must be somebody who created this cow. But it's amazing that every single creature saw some creation of God, but could not come to any conclusion about the fact that God created it, right? God didn't say, hey, look, rabbit, I am creating the cow. I mean, that's it, right? No problem. And the cows are walking around eating grass, and all of a sudden, poof, there's a man. They also don't think anything special about that, so the man looks a little different than most cows, but okay, I mean, right? They don't have any mind to make any conclusions about it. So God allowed everybody to see, God allowed everybody to see, sorry guys, um, Yeah. So if you if so if you happen to have, let's say, if you happen to be Adam or anybody in later generations who says, I didn't see God create the world. Uh, wh who told? Wh where do you know that? How do you know that there is a God who controls nature and who created the world and who is the dominion over the nature of the world? Right? How do you know that? Well, what makes you say that? Well, we believe that. So I don't believe. Right? I mean, if you have a doubt about it. So God, in fact, created mankind to be able to doubt, right? Because he, he, he created him, and he was sleeping when he was created, and then he woke up, and he's already there. The world is complete. And Judy goes on to say that even when he decided he's going to create a woman, mm -hmm. pretty, right, good, exactly. pretty good, he puts him to sleep. Yes. Exactly. So that he wakes up, and he says, hmm, a woman, hmm. right? Don't say, thanks, God, for creating a woman. I saw you. I just think I'm yeah. the way it is. Right? And I imagine he didn't have a scar, right? And yes. didn't, uh, nothing happened. So, so he purposely gave human beings are the only ones who can actually consider and contemplate the fact that God created the world. 
he gave them no chance to see him create world. And there must be a purpose, there must be a reason for that, that Hashem wants people to discover him and believe in him, not to know, you know be hit over the head with the knowledge. You know, it doesn't get you, meet you in the face, say, hello, I'm God. Right? No, it doesn't say that. So, so, therefore, if you had some doubt, we're back into the Ramban, about Shabbat, that, dis, that reminds you about the Chidush, the recreation of the world, and Hashem's will and his power to control nature, then you will remember what your own eyes saw in Yitzhak Mitzrayim, right? Because that will therefore be a proof to you and a commemoration that God is the creator and the one who controls and can turn over nature and so on, right? So the Shabbat is a day when commemorates Mitzrayim, and Mitzrayim is a day that commemorates Shabbat. Yitziat Mitzrayim is commemorates Shabbat. How does that work? Because, what do you mean, how does that work? I mean, uh, they're, in, well, they're intricately connected, right? I mean, we have a Shabbat that, com that commands us to remember the creation of the world. How do we know that? From Yitziat Mitzrayim itself that, that showed us that God is the creator of the world, right? I mean, the reciprocity is hard to believe. I mean, you, you, you're trying to tell me how, how Shabbat no, no, the, the hesed, reminds the, you of Mitzrayim? The second half. What is Tzias Mitzrayim Zecher? Le Shabbat, yeah. Well, the idea of Shabbat. Zecher to a creator. Zecher to the idea of Shabbat, of, of uh, Maseh Brejit. All right? Ki is Kerubo, because on Shabbat they will remember, Vayomru, Hashem hum chadesh bakol, a God is the one who can um, create everything, great wonders and miracles, and does anything that he wills. He has the power to do anything that he wills. So therefore, he must be the one who created everything in the creation. And therefore, Therefore, that's what this alkane, that's what this pasuk meant. Remember that you were in Mitzrayim and God took you out with a great hand and a great outstretched arm. Therefore, he reminds you to keep the Shabbat. Meaning, if you remember all the things that happened in Mitzrayim, therefore, he can command you on the Shabbat because that will convince you of the content of Shabbat that talks about creation, right? Because you weren't there at creation. So Mitzrayim will remind you of that. He nay. And I, I know about Mitzrayim since uh, my, uh, my, since my, my parents told me that and his parents told me that right. and his parents told me that, right? My parents didn't lie to me, right? Right, right. So I have that. I have that. The first people who came out of Mitzrayim told their children, and that was the commandment. You will show your children, the children after you always, as a Mitzvah, to say, see Puritz Yad Mitzrayim every day, right? And to remember yeah. every day. And every Pesach to commemorate, right? So Whereas, there's an unbroken... We have no human being so up universe. So that you couldn't have a tradition about it. You just believe it, right? Here now Hashem does not say God created the world and therefore he wants to rest, he wants you to rest because he rested on the seventh day. This already has mentioned many times. He just says in brief, the, this day is a day of Shabbat for God. He just wants to tell them that through Yitziat Mitzrayim, their experience in Mitzrayim and remembering it, they will know that he is the creator of the world and he rested from it, as it said elsewhere, right? Well, Hashem, excuse me, what Hashem says to you, uh, Hashem, your God has commanded you to make the Shabbos, right. the Shabbos day, to make the Shabbos day. To make. Well, that's a very interesting question. What, what is the word make? Why la sotet the Shabbat? Exactly. So I can make the Shabbos. You have to create Thursday, it. Friday, Monday. But he told you the Yom Hashri. He told you which day it is. He told you which day it is. But and that Shabbat is the day from the time of creation. But to make rather than to observe is a good question. I think it makes me believe that, that you have to create the atmosphere. It's just, uh, it's not just a day when you rest, but you have to sanctify it. You have to make it a day, yes. a special day. 
made certain things different than the rest of the days. So, to make it? Yeah. Um, the next part is a little Kabbalistic because you know whenever he says whenever he says how are we doing time wise oh, we have five minutes I'm not sure if I can understand that part this is uh... How does he? How does he? Uh, how does he translate it? It's not here. I told you, it's not in this. <laughs> Remember, I told you. Mm. This is the Kabbalistic. Would you believe? Yes, it doesn't. You know, the Kabbalistic interpretation. Not here. Here. They do not say. Right here. This is not here. <laughs> because of that, I use what you know. <laughs> you, you take that. He takes that. The Kabbalistic. Take it out thing. because, oh, you know. That's not fair. Yeah. They should give a people a chance to look at it and they'll say, say you don't understand, fine, but to I not so put happy. it in the book. I was happy when I was at the, at the library, at the bookstore. Now I found uh, uh, Ramban. And I, where is it? Where is, I can't find it. So I went back and took, uh, borrow the book. Oh boy. And they explain, well, we don't know put this uh, Kabbalistic thing because, you know, oh. some people is uncomfortable. Oh, 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 oh. I, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember the trouble. There, there is two different mitzvot about Shabbat in the two Atzeret that he broke. The first one is Shamor at Yom HaShabbat. Shamor, yes. Keep, Zohar. observe. No, the first one is Zachor. The first is Zachor. Zachor. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Zachor, remember the Shabbat to make it to Shabbat, right? And this one is Shamor. Shamor, Shamor. Preserve it. And shamor, to preserve it, means the mitzvot that you are not allowed to do. You must not work. You must not set a fire. You must not, right? Mm -hmm. Must not. All the things that are to keep away from the things that would spoil the Shabbat is zachor, is shamor in our one. The zachor in the first aseret that he wrote is to do the things that you do need to do Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Eat a beautiful meal, Kiddush, dress beautiful make, clothing, make Kiddush. right? Make kiddush and so on, right? Special tefillot, the atmosphere that you're creating, the positive things. The Ramban there in the first aseret that he wrote says he wanted to make sure that you understand that the first one is mitzvot of love, and the other one is connected to the mitzvot of awe or fear of God, right? I must not do this, I must not do this. That's sort of like prohibitions. The first one is, I want to do, I want you to do this, I want you to do this, right? So he calls one of them love and the other one awe or fear. And he says here, this mitzvah, which is out of fear, the ones not to do, the prohibitions, are connected to Yitziat Mitzrayim, where the other one is not connected. The other one didn't mention Yitziat Mitzrayim. So now he's trying to explain that. Derech met. we will be able to add here something, that this dibur, which is with shamor, preserving, to fear the great gods, the great name of God. Therefore, he reminds us to remember Yitziat Mitzrayim because of his great powerful hand, right? What did he do in Mitzrayim? He brought plagues on the Mitzrayim, right? He did uh, horrible, powerful things. That we, all those things that we saw in Mitzrayim, that's what he says, Biyad chazaka right? That's what he did. Umimenu lanul And from that memory of Mitzrayim comes the fear or the awe of God's power. Therefore, da 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 da. Therefore, he wants you to remember Yitziat Mitzrayim in the context of Shamor, and not in the concept of Zachor. You know what I mean? Uh, on the side, it's, it's by the by, right? And by the way, Hashem uses this, uh, Hashem uses this in other contexts when he says that you must not oppress the poor, you must not oppress the widow or the orphan or the stranger in your land. I want you to remember what happened when you were in Mishraim and you were a slave and you know what I did to the people who were oppressing you? I smashed them. So I want you never to do that because I will smash you. That was you. Mitzrayim, apart from making us very grateful that we were slaves and we were taken out, also gives us an impression of how God treats people who are evil, people who are, who are, uh, who are cruel. You just remember that. Right? 
big sign, hey, be aware. Right. Of and, and Hashem, and the Torah is mentioned when, when they talk about not oppressing the widow and the orphan. Remember that you were once in Mitzrayim, and I took you out of there with a strong hand. So some people think that's being sensitive. You know, Remember what it feels like when you were an orphan. Yeah. The Ramban says, no, 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 no. For, I want you to remember what happened when you were there and people did that to you. Remember what I did? Yeah, so that's what you have to remember. That's more effective, according yes, to the Ramban, yeah. than asking people to be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice to be nice. I mean, he's not, he's not, wrong. He's not, he's not, he's not rejecting that. But he says, you know, more effective. Say outside that, that, oh, God is, God is love. Everything is love. Okay, but, yeah. but if I'm not, if I don't feel like, yeah, but I don't understand the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but to go, I don't understand. Can you? Uh, I mean, May I simply ask you to go? Yeah? Yeah, I'm just going to go. 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 Yeah, I